Hello and welcome back to a Two Math Magicians proof. Today I'm going to be looking at the divisibility by 3. So to check if a number is divisible by 3, you might have heard the neat little trick that you just add up its digits and if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3, then so was the in initial number. So for example, take the number 18, it has digits 1 and 8, which add up to give you 9, which is of course 3 times 3. So it can be written as 3 times an integer, therefore it was divisible by 3. So therefore, this tells us that 18 was divisible by 3. Similarly, for the number 21, we add up 2 and 1. It gives us 3, which is, of course, 3 times 1, which is 3 times an integer 1. Um, but, for example, the number 26, we add up the 2 and the 6. It gives us 8, which is not equal to 3 times n, where n is an integer. We can't write it in that way. Um, but, you know, a lot of you might know this trick. It's get taught it pretty pretty early on. It's super useful, but do you know where it comes from? It, that's a little bit more sophisticated. So I think the first thing we should do is introduce some notation. Um, the modulo operation. So the modulo operation returns the remainder when dividing a given number by another given number. So for example, we say that the remainder when dividing 5 by 2 is 1, right? Because if we divide 5 by 2, we get 2, but then we also get remainder half, right? So it's 2 and a half. Um, so this can be represented. This can We, we can say that 5 is, is congruent to, not, not equal to, but congruent to, 1 modulo 2, right? So when we take 5 and we divide it by 2, we get 1 as the answer. When we take this number, divide it by this number, the remainder is this number here. Um, which we know to be true, because it's that number there, right? Um, cool. So let's to, so let's let's prove this this handy little trick about 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 the number three. Let me just draw my line here. Okay, cool. So let's define the number x as long as we want x to be. So we have c n c n minus one dot 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 c. 3, C2, C1, and then I'm going to say C0, and this line over top. See, I should get rid of this line to avoid confusion. But um, that line over top indicates that x is not the product of all of these numbers C, Cn, Cn minus 1, so on, but it's the decimal expansion of this. So how do I put this? For example, if, if C0 were, you know, let, let's say C0 were like 2 and C1 can be 3 and C2 can be 5, then that implies that x equals, well, 2 here, and then 3 here, and then 5 here, so 532. Not 2 times 3 times 5, but just taking the numbers and physically putting them next to each other. Not, not any kind of operation on them, but physically putting them next to each other. So the number x is is almost a decimal expansion. It has units digit C0, tens digit C1, hundreds digit C2, and 10 to the n's digit Cn, right? Um, and that's a really important point because it means we can also write we can also write x as um, 10 to the n, well actually I'll do it this way, C0, because that's its units digit, that's the unit digit of x, plus 10 lots of C1, because that's the tens digit of x, plus 100 lots of C2, because that's the hundreds digit, and 1,000 lots of C3, and, you know, all the way up to 10 to the n lots of Cn. Um, and C I just kind of used to indicate coefficient on it, coefficient of this, of the 10 to the n terms. Um, so, you know, if, if we go back to the example when C0 was 2 and C1 was 3 and C2 was 5, we can see that, you know, this notation at the top tells us that x is 532, and this notation at the bottom tells us that x is, whoops, that x is equal to um, 2 plus 10 times 3 plus 100 times 5, which is, of course, 532. So, so that's just saying the same thing again, right? So now we want to take both sides, as in x and then this side, modulo 3. So essentially we want the remainder when we divide x by 3, right? So x modulo 3 is congruent to 
um, all of this, C0 plus 10C1 plus 100C2 plus 1000C3 plus da 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 plus 10 to the N C N. And I pick zero, of course, because 10 to the zero is one. So there's a one there. All modulo three. So, you know, the same way you can like square both sides or add one to both sides, you can take modulo three as both sides. Um, and then, you know, if you know anything about taking modulos of both sides, you'll know that the uh, this sum taken modulo three is the same as the sum of each term taken modulo three. So this is equivalent to c to the 0 modulo 3 plus 10c1 modulo 3 plus, I'm not going to write it all out because it's space of space, but for the sake of space, um, but all of that, you see. So you can almost take the modulo 3 of each individual term just like that. Um, and then a further thing we should know is that the product of two numbers taken modulo 3 will equal the product of the individual numbers taken modulo 3. So what that means is that this is equal to C0 modulo 3. Um, there's a 1 there, but 1 modulo 3 is just 1, right? Plus 10, um, yeah, plus 10, oh, low battery, all that, plus 10 modulo 3, C1 modulo 3, plus da 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 da, plus 10 to the n modulo 3, cn modulo 3. Um, cool, but now, the important point to remember now is that any power of 10 always returns a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. And that's because, you know, if you subtract 1 from 10, you get 9. And if you subtract 1 from 100, you get 99. And if you subtract, you've got like 10,000, and you subtract 1, you get 9,999, right? And clearly these are all divisible by 3, right? Because this is just 3 times 3. This is just 3 times 33, and 3 times 3,333. So this is your remainder here, this minus 1 here, because the number before 10, the number before 10 to the n, is always divisible by 3. Therefore, 10 to the n always returns a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. So that means that 10 to the n mod 3 is just 1. Uh, so you might already see where this is going. This is still c0 mod 3 plus, well, this is just 1, right? So c1 mod 3, because this just becomes 1 times that, plus, and I can return even c2 mod 3 just getting rid of that hundreds term that would be there, plus all the way up to cn mod 3. Because any, any, all of these 10 to the n, 10 to the n minus 1, 10 to the n minus 5, they're, they're all return a remainder when divided by 3. They return a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. So there's just a hidden 1 here, as you always have with, with these kind of things. Um, okay, cool. But, um, this is, you know, this is doing the reverse of this step here. When we expanded out this modulo 3 almost, we can, like, factorize this modulo 3 because I said that the if you can take the modulo of each individual sum, if each individual term in a sum is the same as the modulo of just the sum itself. So this is the same as C0 plus C1 plus C2 plus da 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 plus C to the n minus 1 plus Cn all modulo 3. Um, and although it's not necessarily immediately obvious, remember there's an x modulo 3 here, this, this does prove it, um, that line there, quad erat demonstrandum, as has been shown. So now we can see that the remainder, when dividing x by 3, is the same as the remainder when dividing the sum of the digits of x, because remember, that's just because x was defined in this way. So this is just the sum of the digits of x. This thing that I've just highlighted there, that's the sum of the digits of x. So the remainder when dividing x by 3 is the same as the remainder when dividing the sum of the digits by 3. Therefore, x is divisible by 3 if and only if the sum of its digits is also divisible by 3. Let me say that again. x is divisible by 3 
therefore it returns a remainder of 0 if and only if the sum of its digits also returns a remainder of 0 when divided by 3. I think an important thing to note, a fun thing to note, is this, this can be like further abstracted so that the sum of the digits of x will only be divisible by 3 if the sum of those digits, i.e. the sum of the sum of the digits of x, are also divisible by 3. Therefore, x will only be divisible by 3 if the sum of the sum of the digits of x are also divisible by 3, and so on, you see? It's confusing, yes, let me say that differently. Um, if we have... God, let me just pick it up. Let's think, like... Even nine, oops, change that actually. Even the number ninety-nine, yes. Let's do that. Get that. Is this highlighted? There we go. So even the number ninety-nine, right? If we add up the digits, we get nine plus one five, nine plus nine, which is equal to eighteen, right? And so we know that 99 will be divisible by 3 if and only if the sum of its digits, i.e. 18, is also divisible by 3. But that we also know that 18 is only divisible by 3 if and only if um, 1 plus 8 equals 9 is divisible by 3. Right? So 9 we know is divisible by 3 because it's just 3 times 3. Um, so 9 is divisible by 3, therefore 18 is divisible by 3, therefore 99 is divisible by 3. Do you know what I mean? So, let me think of another example. Um, even if it's just like 903, right? 903, okay, the sum of the digits of 903 is just 9 plus 3, right? And that is 12, right? And 12 is just, so I can say easily in the corners. Well, and 12 is just 1 plus 2. The sum of the digits of 12 is just 1 plus 2, which equals 3. So 3 is clearly divisible by 3. Therefore, we can say this 12 is divisible by 3. Therefore, 903 is divisible by 3. So this is me saying that the sum of the digits of 903... Sorry, 903 is divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3, which means that 12 has to be divisible by 3. And 12 is divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. So therefore, 3 is divisible by 3. Therefore, we can say that 903 is only divisible by 3, if and only if 3 is divisible by 3, which it, of course, is. Therefore, 903 is divisible by 3. So this can be, you know, this can go on forever, depending on how long your initial starting number was. Um, there you go. That, that proves the little trick that you can add up the digits in the number to see if it's divisible by 3. But, I mean, this also means, remember, what we've proven here is that if you have a number, let's say, oh, let's say 16, right? 16 is 1 plus 6, which equals 7. And 7, I can tell you, returns a remainder of 1 when you divide it by 3, right? Because, well, 6 is 2 times 3, and then you're adding 1 to that to give you 7. Therefore, the remainder is 1. So um, this also means that 16 returns a remainder of 1 mod 3. So 16 is 1 mod 3, which we know to be true because 16 is 15 plus 1, and 15 is divisible by 3, it's just 5 times 3, therefore 16 is 1 plus 0 mod 3, which is just 1. So um, if we almost, going off from that here, we can say, let's just say x equals 16, right? Then we can say that 16 mod 3 is congruent to the sum of the digits of 16, 1 plus 6 mod 3, um, and 1 plus 6 mod 3 is just 7 mod 3, but 7 mod 3 is just 1 mod 3, because you can take out 3 from that and take out 3 again from that. Um, so that tells us that 16 is 1 mod 3, which of course it is. So it's not just that the sum, it's not just that the number is divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits are divisible by 3, but also a number returns the same remainder when divided by 3 as the sum of its digits does when, when divided by 3, if, if you see what I mean. But the core of this proof is that a number is divisible by 3 if and only if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, yeah.
Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Remember, maths is the way. Bye.